In the most deeply talented NBA draft I've seen in all my years of watching ball, the Boston Celtics selected a diamond in the rough. I'm going to make a separate video on my Raptor snagging Christian Coloco at the start of the second round, who's just one of many steals from this stacked draft class. But 20 picks after that Toronto selection, potentially the biggest robbery, was made by the new yet proven to be amazing general manager Brad Stevens, who used his 53rd overall pick to take the 19-year-old product out of Alabama in J.D. Davison. Davison's a three-way cross hybrid of Tyrese Maxey, John Morant, and Norman Powell. The ambidextrous ball handling, natural scoring poise, and straight godly jumping ability from JD is NBA ready, and given GM Stevens said the Celtics' biggest need was shot creation off the pine, the 6'3", 195-pound playmaker in Davison is the perfect fit. Only 13.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit the bell. Drop a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Before the 2022 draft, speaking on the Celtics' biggest goals for the offseason, former coach and current head executive Brad Stevens said, quote, If you ask me right now what we need, I'd like to have a little bit more scoring, consistent scoring off the bench. When he first moved to the front office, Brad did a great job at retooling the Celtics roster by signing Al Horford and hiring former Greg Popovich assistant Ime Udoka. As a result of those deals, the Celtics won the Eastern Conference and got two wins from winning the finals. Now, the natural-born GM seems to have brought more luck to fans in Boston as just seven picks before the draft was over, with point guards being selected few and far between throughout the course of the night. The explosive athlete with all-star upside in Alabama's J.D. Davison was somehow still left on the board for Boston to take. To be fair, Davison only shot 30% from three-point range, and the NBA's of course been revolutionized into a beyond-the-arc style of play. J.D. took two and a half triples per night in 33 NCAA games and made roughly one of those attempts. So it's clear the kid has shown some flashes of deep range shooting, but that area has some developing to do. Despite that, JD's first step off the bounce, passing instincts, polished finishing, and ability to change the pace as an intelligent floor general are all qualities that outweigh Davison's perceived lack of a three-pointer. More on that later on. At Alabama, per 40 minutes, the point guard dished out seven dimes per game, a facilitating DNA that could potentially help out Yudoka's offensive flow, and if they're lucky, open up space for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. You may be asking yourself how much JD will be able to produce come the playoffs for the reigning East champions, given he's an inexperienced rookie. But as I vaguely mentioned in the intro, this kid's game reminds me a lot of Norman Powell for my raps, who was a massive bench contributor for Toronto back in 2016's playoffs, helping the Raps get two wins away from reaching the NBA Finals. Powell became an NBA champion three years later, and the reason Davison reminds me so much of him is JD's mix of quick twitch speed and long strides, which give him the player builds of a playmaking slasher, just like Norm. In terms of his posterizing springiness, Davison's vertical jump resembles the NBA's most marketable young star in Ja Morant. Man's a fearless finisher who attacks at will, and after getting a full head of steam when attacking the bucket on a line drive, that allows Davison to rise up for vicious dunks. In terms of his ball handling chops and passing, that's why I had to make JD's player comparison a three-way cross hybrid to include Tyrese Maxey. Maxey took advantage of an unhealthy Fred Van Vliet and picked apart my Raptors in the first round to take the pressure off Joel Embiid and James Harden. Davison isn't close to the shot maker that Maxi is quite yet, but his wherewithal managing the offense allows him to penetrate the lane consistently, which is going to lead to drive and kick opportunities for Celtic shooters spotting up. Regardless of how his game translates to the pros, luckily, JD's only going to be relied upon in Boston's system for the time being as a third and at times second string point guard, given Boston has Marcus Smart and the aforementioned Derek White. But this could be a special player that landed in the Celtics hands down at pick number 53, and J.D. Davison could end up as a monumental draft steal with how much room he has to develop. There is one player comparison I haven't brought up, but based off Davison's combination of quick twitch speed, crafty finishing, and explosiveness, it's not completely insane. I saw a post on Twitter comparing him to Derek Rose, and while that's a bit of a stretch, 
I could see why that comparison's being made, based off Davison's ability to hang in the air forever and make heavily contested layups in transition. Everyone's going to be concerned about his deep range shooting, but if you watch JD shoot the ball, he actually has a very fundamentally sound release with a slower Damian Lillard type form. Considering the man has the right shooting mechanics, it's going to be all about how Davison's mind responds to the speed and of course blinding pressure the NBA provides, which is going to determine how good of a floor spacer he'll be in the pros. In terms of his defense, JD's passing lane anticipation and weak side help are both stellar, as displayed right here, where his eyes zone in on the ball handler, and he rotates over to shock his matchup by stuffing him clean in one of his highlights of the year. Most players would stay solid on their man, but it's that all-out hustle and team mentality which likely attracted the Celtics scouting department to JD. If you're wondering about Davison's one-on-one -on -one defense, after running the shooter off the line with his right lead foot, his matchup is caught stumbling into a forced post-up attempt, which again, JD swats away. Maybe his highlight of the year though defensively came against Georgia, where he shows off his lateral quickness and shot blocking instincts, by this time blocking a jump shot, then sticking with the play and compiling his second stuff of the possession to force the shot clock violation. The tape proves that Davison is a two-way player, an explosive athlete, and a crafty finisher, so it's mind-boggling that more GMs didn't take him seriously. Just listen to what Brad Stevens had to say about JD. Hey Brad, just uh, on the uh, drafting of Davison, what's, what's, the, what's the thought process in, in selecting him and what's the plan? Yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll talk about all the plans and everything else later, but obviously he's a guy that we've seen all year long, uh, very young, um, very explosive. That's pretty obvious. Um, has the ability to get inside the pain and make plays and has some things that he'll have to improve on, but um, has a lot of physical tools, um, a good competitor. And, uh, and obviously I think played, you know, in a, in a, in a really good program for really good coaches. Um, and so we're looking forward to getting him up to boss. Who's your personal player comparison for JD top three commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st, earn a free shoe. The top five earn a free Jersey. Today's shout out goes to Kent Saludo who says I'm high on Jabari Smith jr. And I thought he should have been the first overall pick. He reminds me of Paul George, the way he attacks the rim and that smooth looking jumper. He's more of a big man and PG's more of a guard, but the resemblance of their playing style is really there. I also think Jaden Hardy is going to prove a lot of teams wrong for passing on him. Hardy dropped to the second round, and I think he's a lot better than what his draft status is. Appreciate every answer. DFlow signing off.